Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. I think that this has to be uh, a record that I have gotten on with no, no concerns at all. That's a blessing. I thank God for that. I see Ray and Carol O'Neill are on. Wanda Knight is on. Deaconess Yolanda Reynolds is on. Amen. We are grateful for you being here. We are grateful for you being here. I am grateful that you are here with us on this Thursday afternoon as we open our hearts and minds for our Thursday afternoon Bible study. And uh, we've got a rich one today. Uh, as we normally would have uh, in our um, study time. We certainly want to uh, thank God and honor him for our uh, time of fellowship, and we want to certainly be uh, encouraged in the work uh, that we are doing um, here um, and in other places. We want to uh, certainly ask and extend uh, a warm welcome to all of those who are part of uh, whatever way you are viewing, and um, and so we are just we are just grateful. I just want to be sure that we were still on it. It froze, and so you just never know what that might mean overall uh, for this work. So, okay, now. That being said, preliminary stuff is out of the way. We want to continue to pray for our church. I, I guess I should name the church. We welcome you to Purity Baptist Church in Urban Center, our virtual Bible study. Uh, we want you to continue to pray one for another. We realize that much is going on in our lives, much is going on in our world, much is going on around us, and we are, we are grateful. Uh, good afternoon, uh, LaCasha Boyd. Uh, my nickname with her is Dr. Pastor. And so, yes, I'm so glad to see you, Usher LaCasha. I'm glad to see you. Uh, and I see Brother Ransom has sent his normal uh, heart um, and we come on to let me know that we are on and he can see us downstairs. So we appreciate that. Uh, and we salute Brother Ransom while we have this opportunity uh, for the work that he does to keep uh, things flowing. Um, he and Brother Terry and so many others who um, make a difference here in our congregation. I want to take a special time to say thank you to our food distribution team. Um, that team really works at two parts to that work. Uh, the persons who go and retrieve what we get, the team that sorts what we get, and then the team that uh, redistributes. So they come in and set up and redistribute uh, for the community. I had an appointment here today with uh, some persons from some doctors and pharmacists who uh, will be working with me in terms of getting a community health fair um, and reaching out to uh, maybe a new demographic for us here at Purity. And, um, and they were just enamored with uh, the work that was being done. Um, as I said, we had a uh, surprise visit from the health department about two weeks ago, and uh, they were enamored. And not often does the health department come and take things away that they learn rather than leaving things that they want to teach us and so, uh, but that's just how purity operates and we thank God for the excellence that we, uh, that we operate in. Truly God is a uh, blessing us right now. I want to get right into our uh, Bible study. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I just want to read uh, one verse and then we'll go um, we'll go further. And I'm going to read this from the New International Version. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse 24, and I'm going to read this from the uh, New International 
uh, version, New International Version, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. I'd like for you to think with me for a little while on the subject, seeking our neighbor's good. Seeking our neighbor's good. Let us pray. Most holy, all wise, eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity that we have to come before your presence. Kind Father, we are so grateful that we can call on your holy and righteous name, for your name is a strong tower. The righteous we run in and there we find safety. We thank you that in being righteous, that doesn't mean that we're perfect. We thank you that in being righteous, that doesn't mean that we make all the right decisions. But in being righteous, that means that we have accepted the sacrifice that was made for us on Calvary's cross, that your son Jesus died for us, paid the price for our sins, and righteousness has been imputed unto us. God, use me as I share in this Bible study. Give us all encouragement as we move forward in all that you would have for us. We pray for those families who are dealing with grief, those families who are dealing with sickness, those families who are dealing with just all kinds of things that are happening. We pray for that individual who is going through a lonely period. We pray, God, for the one that has gotten news or report that has sort of dampened their day. God, we pray for the safety of all of those under the sound of my voice, even as we go into this holiday weekend. We realize, God, with so much happening around us, with things being as they are, things can happen in a split second. But God, we pray your protection. We pray peace. We pray serenity, even in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A great and underlying principle that runs throughout the Bible is that of seeking the good of one's neighbor. This is basically what Jesus meant when he said that one who saves his life shall lose it. But the one who loses his life for the sake of the gospel shall find it. People must realize that when they seek the good of their neighbor, they are seeking their own good at the same time. In this passage, three thoughts are projected that call for our consideration. We read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24, which says, No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. Good afternoon, uh, Deaconess Genevieve Johnson. The first thought that we, that we should consider, the first thought is a caution. The first thought in that scripture says, no one should seek their own good. That which is condemned in this passage is that which most people are guilty. At this point, an individual becomes a victim of society. As a whole, society encourages people to seek their own benefit. And when they do, they are praised for it. The normal tendency is to look out for oneself. But the scripture cautions us that we should not seek our own good, but that there is a higher and greater sense of seeking that we must do. But because of the societal norms, because of the way the world is today, we often spend more time seeking our own good than, than not seeking our own good. And it is important for us to begin to unravel that because that practice has caused likely some of the violence, some of the uh, disunity, some of the dysfunction, some of the, um, the thoughts that are surrounding people today that have our society in the condition that it's in. Because we have not taken seriously this scripture, no one should seek their own good. 
and often those who are um, that those who are expert at seeking their own good have no end to it. Um, there's a quote that talks about um, givers ought to be careful because takers have no limit. And so we have to be mindful of that, that sometimes that will shape our thinking around it. And it has probably been what has pushed society in the direction that it's gone. But in doing so, because we have this desire to seek our own good, we have somehow allowed dysfunction and allowed violence, anger, jealousy, because that's what happens, envy, to creep into our situations. It's back to a lesson we talked about some time ago uh, with Cain and Abel and how Cain's gift uh, was not received as well as Abel. But because Cain was seeking his own good, he didn't. He held back his best from God. That's the first thing he did. And then he even murdered his brother because he got angry. God told him at that point, sin is crouching at your door. Sin is right there. You have a choice. You can decide how you're going to deal with it. And that's what happens in society. That's what's happening in the world around us. The, the scripture indicates that there's nothing new under the sun. That same motivation is behind many of the things that we see today. People seeking their own good. That which is condemned in this passage is sanctioned by a certain view of religion. A good example that, of that is when people of a particular religious philosophy retire from the world to make sure their own spiritual welfare. It is easy to overlook the interests of others while promoting one's own salvation. So even because, see, sometimes we think, this is a good point to bring up, sometimes we think, well, you know, for religious reasons, I'm going to retire from society, I'm going to retire from the world, I'm going to resign from those things. But even that is not, that, that's not, because you don't, if you, if, you, if you take your example away, if you take your example out, if you seek your own spiritual relationship, but don't allow that spiritual relationship to become an example to somebody else, and I'm not saying that you are, you are trying to force somebody to go your way, but I'm saying you live your life as an example. You're not, I'm not telling you you've got to beat somebody over the head with the Bible, but you live your life as an example. You live amongst them. You allow your mistakes to be seen. You allow your successes to be seen. You allow your consistency to be seen. You allow your inconsistency to be seen. We certainly want to uh, be mindful of that. And uh, uh, Sister Denise Jones, uh, we will pray for your baby at the end of this um, service, at the end of this Bible study. We, we, we don't have to call you. We can pray right at the end of the Bible study. Stay right on this Bible study. And we'll pray with you. Now, uh, the next thing, that which is condemned in this passage does not mean that each person is not to look out for self. So just stay right on, Sister Jones. We're going to pray for you in just a moment. The whole message of the Bible is that every person is to be a responsible person. The Bible says, they made me the keeper of the vineyards. But mine own vineyard have I not kept. Song of Solomon, verse 1 and 6. It also says each person is to remove the beam from his own eye before he seeks to pull the moat from another person's. Matthew chapter 7, verse 5, and Luke chapter 6, verse 42. So uh, this passage does not mean that you're not supposed to look out for yourself. You, there is the responsibility to do it. These two scriptures coincide with that. You can't keep others' vineyards and your vineyard go unkept. You can't pull the beam out of someone else's eye and there's a, 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 yes, the moat out of someone else's eye while there's a beam in your eye. So there is some responsibility that you have to take for yourself, but it should not be so overwhelming for you that you have uh, no thought or no care for those around you. Just like with this person coming on, uh, Sister Jones, we certainly care for her. We want her to be whole. We want her baby to be whole. And so we're going to pray for her. We don't have to, we don't have to get beyond this setting to do it. We can do it right in this setting. We can do it right in this setting. 
The second thought is a rule that ev let every person seek the good of others. You see that in the scripture? The second thought is a rule, let every person seek the good of others. This rule expressly applies to every person. Paul said in Galatians chapter 6 verse 2, Bear ye one another's burdens, so fulfill the law of Christ. Whatever a person pos person's position is in life, whether it be in the church, the family, or society in general, he is under the obligation of self-denial, benevolence, and helpfulness. Whatever a person's position is in life, whether it be in the church, the family, a society in general, he is under the obligation of self-denial, benevolence, and helpfulness. We have, a, we have a responsibility as believers in Christ to be helpful to the world around us, to, to be responsible uh, for, for what we know God would have for us to do and to help in the needs of others. Now, that does not mean that we negate ourselves, but it does mean that we, we take on the role and the road to helping someone else uh, do what's necessary to be done. There is a great need in society for such helpfulness. People are sick. People are sin-ridden. People are lonesome. People are suffering. And people are lost. And at some point, we all come to the place where we need help. We need God to help us as we strive to do his will. We need him to help us and and we need to be then the hands and feet deacon henry often will say in his prayers um, you will often hear him say uh, christ has no hands but our hands no feet but our feet and, and 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 that is a motivation for each one of us to make certain that we are standing in the gap that we are standing in the place just as Deaconess Reynolds has done even in this moment. So in, encountering and fully embracing the request and letting her know that prayers are already going up. That is the kind of help that we need to be. That we would be able to, in our own doing, ensure that we help somebody else. Now remember, I said not negate responsibility for ourselves because we still have to take care of our own business. We still have to take care of our own things. That's right, uh, 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 Sister O'Neill. We thank God for you praying. But we still have to do that. We still have to take care of our own stuff. But we can also be of assistance to someone else. We can also stand in the gap for someone else. We can also build up someone else. And that's an important place for us to be able to stand. The one best way this rule can be followed is by spreading the gospel. When we take spreading the gospel seriously, this uh, week we celebrated, well, yes, at the beginning of the week, um, Sunday begins a new week. Um, at the beginning of the week, we celebrated Missionary Day. Sister Wanda Knight, we thank you for praying. At the beginning of the week, we celebrated Missionary Day. And uh, one of the works of the missionaries is to ensure uh, that the gospel is spread, but it's spread by meeting the needs of people. And we learned that that was an example that Jesus did. Jesus spread the gospel, but he also met the individual need of people. He addressed their hunger as much physically as he did spiritually. And so there are times where we have to sort of compel ourselves to be a part of the spiritual coming together uh, of, 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 of who we are and what we are doing. There's a, there, there was a time for that, that we do that. But then there was a time where we also make sure that in some way we can administer to those temporal needs 
that we have the ability to do so. Now, if it's, without, if, if it's beyond your scope to do it, you can't do it. But if it's within your power, my grandmother used to say this, if I can help somebody, she used to repeat the, uh, the, the words of this hymn, if I can help somebody along the way, if I can help somebody, if I can cheer them with a word or, or, or a song, I'm not getting it right. Deacon Smith, if she were on, she'd be able to correct me. Or maybe there are others. But then my living shall not be in vain. The bottom line to that hymn is what, what, what I can do to help somebody else suggests that my living takes on different significance. What I do to help somebody else suggests that my living becomes something that is, makes an impact on the world. And I don't know about you, but I don't want my living to be in vain. I don't want my living to be in vain. Thank you, Sister Boyd, uh, Sister Lakasha, Usher Lakasha. We appreciate you praying. Thank you, Deacon Watson. We appreciate you praying. Look how the community comes together. See, we don't have to, we don't have to get all, we, we, look how the community comes together. We're praying already, uh, Sister Jones. We are lifting your concern to the Lord. The third thought is a motive. This is implied, but not specifically in, expressed. The example of Jesus' life and death is an example of unselfishness. His love and sacrifice constitute the moral power of benevolence. He died. Lord have mercy. I felt something when I said it. I felt like it was Sunday morning. He died that others may live. He showed us through his own life. that we ought to have a sense of unselfishness. Jesus himself had no reason to, 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 he hadn't sinned. He died for sins he couldn't, he didn't commit. I won't say could not because he was 100% God and 100% man. He died for sins that he did not commit. He died for a world that rejected him. He died at the hand of people that he would somehow, if they accepted him, have walked, his death would become um, efficacious for his for their sins. His vicarious death. His death would have vicarious benefit for the people who stood and crucified him if they, if, they, if they accepted him. And yet he still died. Unselfish. Some of us count the cost so much of helping others that we miss the opportunity to be blessed because we've done it. There are times where uh, we may not have and we cannot do it, we can, but then there are other times, like this prayer. This prayer didn't cost us anything. Praying for Sister Jones cost us nothing. But now the community has come together and we're praying for she and her baby. To God be the glory. We have to be mindful. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. And when you're seeking the good of others, you ought not, your, your underlying motive ought not be your own good. I, 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 I know some people that right now, it's, it's something I could involve myself with this evening, uh, an event that I could attend. And, 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 and people are, are vying and, 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 and they are being helpful to one person in hopes that that person will then give them something uh, when, they, when, they, when, when they get to wherever they're going to go. Your being unselfish ought not have those kind of strings attached to it. 
Because when you have those strings attached to it, you counterbalance the blessing of what God can do for you. Every door that God wants open for you, he will open. Every way that he wants made for you, he will make. Everything that he wants done for you, he will do. You be you. Be good to others because you know it's good to please God. Be good and genuine to people because that's who you genuinely are. Not because in some other time you're going to be able to call in the favor, although there are times when you have to do that. But, but that ought not be the main motivation. Many of the ills and woes, many of the ills and woes, you know, when people know you're on Bible study, many of the ills and woes of the world today could be remedied if all people would take the admonition of this passage of Scripture. That is, live responsible and useful lives. Much of what we're dealing with this, 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 yesterday, um, the distribution team was out unloading the truck. We do two pickups now, Monday and Wednesday. And here, a high speed chase on Maryland Avenue. Uh, car going down the wrong side of the road. And that just, um, causes Alarm it causes people to not, you know, they don't feel as comfortable. But if we spent more time seeking the good of others, making sure we're comfortable with seeking the good of others, many of the ills and woes of this society today, much of what we see, might find itself down some. You think about all these census murders. Here you got young people on a school bus firing guns. I mean, point blank kind of um, contact. The, the gun did not fire. And then in another case, it did. And you wonder what kind of thing, what kind of stuff has gone on in, in the world, what kind of things have happened that have, that have caused our young people to see themselves that way? Or that caused our society to get to this point? And I think a part of it is rooted right in the scripture, a major part of it. But Paul's admonition was that we seek the good of others. and not put that kind of emphasis on the good of ourselves. That doesn't mean that we don't take care of ourselves. But that we become responsible and useful, allow our lives to be that way so that somebody else becomes better. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We have this prayer concern that uh, Denise Jones has, has brought to us. And we're going to um, pray for Sister Jones. Most holy, all wise, eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to call on your name. We have read the message that has been given to us by Sister Denise Jones. And God, we pray that you would give her the desire to want to live. We know that the situation may be hard. Things may be rough. She's got a 19-year-old. She's got a baby. And she has said she wants to die. But God, because you have used her to bring these two lives in the world, we know that there is meaning in her life. And Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of suicide. We come against the spirit of, 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 of animosity and and whatever may be happening, and we loose the free flowing of your power. 
Father, in fact, we thank you for what you have allowed us to see even in this Bible study as the community comes together even virtually to pray. For while we were attending study, we were also praying. So, Father, we pray that whatever each person brings to the table, whatever need, whatever thought, whatever thing they are desiring, that you would be with them, that you would give them your strength. Lord, we ask that you would allow your will to be made manifest in this world and help us as stewards of the good mysteries of Jesus Christ to help someone else see you in a new and powerful way. We ask all these and all the needful blessings in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your support. We thank you for all that you're doing. And we pray that something was said or done that was helpful to you. But more importantly, we pray that you will be encouraged to it all. Sister Jones, uh, we are going to, from the church uh, phone, give you a call uh, and check in with you. And uh, we will certainly uh, keep you in our prayers. Amen? Amen. Uh, members of the church, not from personal numbers, okay? I'll say it that way. All right, God bless you. Have a, have a wonderful day.